This is the final shibori technique that I'm going to introduce. And believe me, there are so many more, and I encourage you to do some research on your own. But let's talk about this one. So pole wrapping is exactly what's implied, that a piece of cloth that is put on a pole or tube, and you were given a PVC pipe to do this technique, so the cloth is put on and then string, twine, yarn, thread, whatever you have, is wrapped around and around the cloth on the tube and then it's pushed down. This in turn goes into the dye bath and wherever the fabric is uh, gathered and the twine is, the, the dye will be resisted. So let's see how to do that. The next technique I'm going to show you is called pole wrapping. And there are a lot of different ways you can do it. And by that I mean um, the way you put your fabric on. And hopefully I'll show you more than one depending on what I can fit on my pole. Um, and also you can use different thicknesses of string. So to start out, I use these elastic bands to just hold the fabric uh, onto the pole. Uh, if you didn't have ones that were uh, stretchy enough, you could just use masking tape, but you do need to hold your uh, fabric on. So I think maybe I'll use this thicker string. And again, good old granny knot to tie this on. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start going around. And I can try and make it even or maybe I intentionally leave wider spots. That, that's really entirely up to you. And I'm going to do that Keep doing this until I get to the bottom of the cloth. Okay, I fairly evenly put my string and went down to the bottom. And again, this is kind of a case of improvising your knot, how you're going to finish this off. And I would simply say, whatever you think is going to stay. It's not pretty sometimes, but okay. we certainly want it to be tight. Right now that's not working so tight. Let's see if I can make that better. Okay, that's better. All right, so I want to take off my elastic bands. And if it's stuck like that, you can always cut it off. I'll worry about that after. And this one also, I might have to cut it off. Just do it. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, let me cut this one up, is I'm going to scrunch this up by pushing it down my pole. So if you've made it super tight, of course, it's going to get hard to do. I'll keep working with that. I could push it this way too. Okay, but the idea is to get it all scrunched up at one end of your pole. keep working on it. And this will be through the magic of editing that you eventually see it all scrunched up. But the idea certainly is by scrunching it up that's going to offer a resist. Now likewise when I do finally get this, this is the good news here is that it's tight. Um, 
And if it's not tight, then you wouldn't have your fabric resisting the way you want it to. But I will still dip this in water first before I put it into my indigo vat, because of course I want the dye to take evenly. So that's the pole wrapping technique one. Okay, you can see that I managed to scrunch this down pretty much to the bottom of the pole of my first pole wrapping. This is another way you could approach this. And this piece of fabric has been accordion folded. And now I put it onto the tube on kind of diagonal. I got it held in place with these um, rubber bands. And now I think I'll try this other string. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time, where I'm going to go around and around the pole, evenly spacing my thread, or string I should say, and then I'll scrunch it up to, down to one end of the pole once I've completed that. So here we go. come back when I've got it around. Okay, so my fabric is now um, tied, tied on, multiple wraps around. I cut off the rubber bands and now exactly as I did with the other one, I'm going to push this down on my pole. And it's going to be very interesting, I think, to see what happens at these points. And I would say, as usual, I got it pretty tight, but I definitely want to get it down to the other end so that I can be dipping both ends of my pole. I'm not going to be able, my vat isn't going to be so deep that I can just fit it all in. I'm going to have to flip the pole up and down, but if I do that, then I can get two, two samples done, which will be cool. So rather than watch me struggle to do that on camera, I'm going to turn this off and just like magic, it will be down at the other end. Now I'm going to start dipping things in. So everything here is soaked, including my pole wrapped shibori. And with this, I'm just going to drop it in like this. And I'll move it around a little bit. The main thing is you don't want to put your sample in and act like you're doing a wash, like a hand wash. Uh, you really want to, by doing that, you create bubbles, which brings oxygen to the vat, and then your oxygen, your indigo is just sitting on the top, oxidized, and it's not working in your vat. Okay. So let's see what happens. I'm on my driveway, so this is the cool thing. Now, what's going to happen is, is this, that this, as it hits the air, is oxidizing. So under the surface, it looked yellow. Now it looked light green. Now it's turning darker green, and eventually will turn blue. While that's happening, I'm going to do the other end here, because I've got my other shibori. And how long does it take for your cloth to fully oxidize, the indigo to oxidize? I would say about 10 minutes. So that means you do not want to dip your cloth again for another 10 minutes. Now let's suppose that you just had, you know, time before dinner uh, to dip it once, and then maybe you didn't have any more time until the next morning. If your cloth has dried, then you're gonna to wanna to wet it with water again. But if it's just, if it's still damp, you can continue to dip it. You don't have to, to wet it. It will be wet with the indigo. And the whole purpose of having your cloth wet is so that the uh, dye tastes better. So here are the finished results. This was the first technique that I did where I simply wrapped 
the fabric perpendicular to the tube and used a thicker type of string. Turned out well. This is the second technique that I showed you. And this one, I accordion folded it and put it on a kind of angle or twist on the tube. And I also feel that that turned out pretty well. And this is the same technique that I just showed you. Um, however, this one I had dyed first with walnut dye using the accordion technique. And then I unwrapped it, folded it again, and dyed it in indigo. And finally, I had a pole or a pipe that was not as wide as the first one I had used. And so I really kind of improvised here and made up my own wrapping technique. And I encourage you to do the same. Okay, good luck. You've got a pipe. Let's do it.